Call me when another thing would go wrong. Wait, what? what? Please tell me if something is going wrong. I don't know what will go wrong, but something will definitely go wrong. Okay. <clears throat> so, as uh, as I promised, I will start. I will start with a very brief outline of what uh, happened before, so everybody could catch up. So, I actually want to advocate the following idea that higher topological quantum field theory is a closed functor closed is important from category so it's a tensor category of cobordisms. Here is important equipped with geometrical data. And tensor algebra. So maybe that's why functors are important. So up to now, all examples that I know fit into this scheme. So what do you mean and tensor algebra? So two tensor algebra or what do you mean? Two tensor algebra. Uh -huh. From, of course, from two. two mm -hmm. So theories differ by dimension, by the, by the type of cobordism. And uh, by, by by the type of tensor algebra, actually it's tensor algebra of what? Of complexes. And actually of Z2 complexes. It means that they are just Z2 graded. This definition, uh, it's not a final definition, but uh, it is the best thing that I know at the moment because all these fancy words mean that you make up something somewhere and geometrical data, metric, complex structure, uh, connection, uh, differential form, or empty splits between this data and I call this sigma, I call this sigma one, sigma two. So when I call sigma, I assume that uh, it contains geometrical data with the main axiom. Actually, to tell the truth, there was a second axiom. Did you mean to tensor category of the Z complexes? What? Yeah. Okay. The it means the boundary goes to, to, to a complex. There is condition that there is orientation. If boundary has reverse orientation, it goes to dual object. And uh, I don't want to discuss the issue about uh, duality if vector spaces are infinite dimension. So I assume things like this. And actually, there is a, se there is a second condition. It means that if you cut a handle,
is a super trace of low or I of sigma is a super trace of uh, sigma cut. So you see, when you cut a handle, you have two more components of boundary. They have definitely different orientations. So you grow up super trace of I. You grow up vector space and it's dual, and you can take a trace if everything is finite dimensional. So this is the first axiom to be a factor with geometrical data. And now there is a second axiom. So right now, it is clear that since uh, the image are complexes, so there is of course uh, differential acting on complexes. Now we will assume that geometrical data that being equipped with geometrical data would mean belong to differential <laughs> the differential forms on geo. So this uh, trace maximum is it really independent? I mean, in, in that TS situation, you can derive it from, from the usual gluing axiom. Of course, you, you can, so this and this together mean to be a, a factor, of course. You see, when I say it is a closed factor, it's good, but then the question is, what does it mean to be a factor? Well, it's only the lower one, which is the definition of a functor. And the upper one should be a consequence. No, so this thing in words mean A, B, yes. This and this are consequence of being a functor. Oh. But you see, when I say it's a functor, it's nice wording, it's not clear how to apply it. Okay? So mm -hmm. if you want to apply it, you should know that to be a functor means that uh, you can have this operation and this operation. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's a functor between symmetric monoidal categories. So all these fancy words mean just this. So Moliere wrote a novel when somebody was surprised when he realized that he is speaking using prose. So that's why physicists would be surprised that uh, what they are doing is defining a factor. So my small contribution is uh, not even equipping it with geometrical data. This was done uh, by Siegel. And as it turns out, independently and parallel by Kansevich. So I call everything here Dirac Siegel. Kansevich claims that he did it, he did it in parallel on Siegel agreed, and Kansevich prefers the knows the notion nobody's axioms. So I cannot say that it is good to call axioms nobody axioms. I'll do the following. For a moment, I will call it Dirac Siegel and uh, I'll ask Kansevich permission to add him in. I mean, I think people okay. call it functorial field theory, so, right? Oh. So it, it's important, okay, functorial. The question is, uh, which functorial? Is it closed? Where, where it takes values? Okay. So uh, let us follow Kansevich. But when people say functorial, what exactly do they mean? Here, I am trying to be precise. Uh, here, I put a, a differential uh, 
uh, the, the round complex here. So you may ask uh, why necessarily the round complex? Maybe it would be good to have here another complex. Maybe, maybe. So here, when I say geometrical data, then function of this geometrical data is supposed to be some DGA, I think. Maybe this would be even uh, more general. Still. By the way, there seems to be a subtlety with the target category. Once you start thinking of operations, you can do that. Like, if you have two uh, functors that obey these axioms, you can consider the tensor product, which is a, a natural operation. It corresponds to two yes. non-interacting theories. But then you can also consider the direct sum, which is much more subtle because it looks like you need to modify the uh, monoidal structure on your ta target category. Uh, because once you take uh, the direct sum, um, if you just use the usual category of vector spaces, some of some of the axioms breaks down. Um, it would be interesting to discuss this because the simplest important example is uh, where you have say one particle it's a point with a spin S1 and another particle with the spin S2. So you tensor here, here you also tensor. Yeah, so tensor product is okay. Uh, direct sum is a more, it's like, it's, it's like having a super selection sectors in the theory. So it's different fr from two non inter so, 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 so could you comment the puzzling? It's, it's very interesting to see uh, the puzzles. So, so what? What is the example? I'll draw it down. The uh, like if you try to make sense of a direct sum of uh, two quantum field theories, then you run into a puzzle. So direct sum. Uh, it means that mm -hmm. direct what is, sum. What does mean for quantum that, mechanics? So sum of theories means that space of states or whatever would tensor. No, no, no. So, so tensor, is, that corresponds to tensor product of theories. It's like when you have two non-interacting systems. Yes. Uh, and direct sum corresponds that you take direct sum of uh, vector of uh, the spaces of states. So, uh, ah. yeah. Ah, I see. You know, uh, so, so, so what is... Uh, uh, what is the physical picture when you can when you take this direct sum? Um, so, so some physical pictures have actually arise recently when people consider, uh, say, for example, two-dimensional quantum field theory, where there is a domain wall, and on the two sides of the domain wall there are different patterns of uh, of higher global, like generalized global symmetries breaking. Uh, so it's like okay. So uh, so you say, and I'll try to, I'll try to make a picture, and you will tell me if it's correct. So in in zero plus one dimensional theory, there's no problem, right? Um. There's just two independent evolutions in the two parts of your space of states for a point. However, I, I hope, I hope that you mean the following. Yeah, I think. So there is a domain wall, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, when you have a domain wall, you definitely have something here and something here. And they are different, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted to say it, but you see, first you say something good about somebody whom you present, and then you say something bad, only in this order. Otherwise, nobody would, he would hear the good news. You start with good news, there are bad news. <coughs> Actually, <coughs> this cutting is not in the Siegel's axiom. And the absence of such cutting is the main drawback 
of Siegel's axiom. You mean corners? Yes, it, it is called corners. So, would there be a proper, okay. So here we have this nobody's axiom. Suppose I'll try to derive something like Lagrangian description. I would like to cut this manifold in pieces. But these pieces inevitably have corners. So would I be able to do this? I will say, oh, look, for any simplicial object, <coughs> for any complex like this, for any triangulation, I will define you a quantum field theory and that will be great. Greatest man in the world. When this goes uh, small, it would be the analog of exponential of the Lagrangian. So people actually derived functional integral somehow, cutting line into pieces. You can see such derivation on many courses. But it is very interesting to find the same thing for a square. So the question is, what should go for a square? Square. So uh, the most probable answer is that it should be like two categories. So you have something like object here, morphisms, vertical morphisms, horizontal morphisms, and this, two morphisms, okay? And then the issue is how to equip it with geometrical data. It is actually a problem. Kolya, have you heard people discussing this problem? Uh, well, at least in topology, I mean, that's the subject of extended topological fields, yeah. right? So... Yes, but extended topological. However, physicists, physicists and also in application, it is better to study something equipped. Exactly. Yeah, so in so the non-topological context. This when you equip with, equip with the empty space. Mm -hmm. in, the, in, in, in the non topological context, I don't think anyone discusses this seriously. No, no, no you, you say nobody discusses this seriously. I, I, I don't think so, yeah. But I think it's a pity. Because would you be able to do this? You can do a lot. There's, there's a very mildly non-topological example, which is in some, in some form known from much before topological theories, which is to the young Nils, 1975, which is, uh, has ah, a piece of data. Yes. Basha, good, Basha, good point, good point. Yes. And as far as I understand, you cut this into yes. pieces. Yes. Okay, yes. Kole, you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I forgot about this, but it, it's almost topological. It's almost topological, absolutely. Uh, you see what does it mean, almost? When you well, start to equip with something, the modular space support. of the structures is a, is a ray. So it's kind of very much. Okay. structure. So from this discussion, I see that people in the United States are discussing this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But, but but by the way, I I, th I don't think that's the issue that I was referring to, though. Um, but but if you have this, you can have uh, the main wall. Yeah, I shouldn't have said the main wall at all. The main wall is when you tr when you try to have the different sectors and different sp like it's just about uh, having e different sectors in your theory, like the, so that the Hilbert space is a direct sum rather than tensor product. So yes, but. Uh... What is the situation where we have a help help but space is a direct sum? I can try to remember. I, I know where to look it up. I'll try, I can try to remember and tell you. Okay, that. okay. 
Okay, so please try to remember because uh, you see. Well, it's some, you... maybe it's something uh, maybe something sitting in a tensor product, but it's it's a part of a direct pro of a tensor product with like C two. Like like a space ten tensor up plus a space tensor down or something like that. Um, but, but it's not. Uh, no. Okay, so Kolya, may I ask you? Could you give a link to the puzzle? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, and I'll study it, and we will discuss it, because mm -hmm. uh, you see, I, I need to try resolve the puzzle, and if I would fail, I'll uh, explain the puzzle. We will try to resolve it. Later. <clears throat> so, so well, all of these things, okay, could be applied because now people don't like theoretical science. People like science with application. After all, you know that. In the Chinese university, it is written that members of the university should serve Chinese people. Okay, so we are trying to make something global. So we need to serve, to serve all people. So to serve it means that we need to have an application. So. <clears throat> in one dimensional theory. The most obvious application is, of course, quantization of homological algebra. <clears throat> you may ask, why quantization? It's because the people in homological algebra found uh, various constructions that look like this. So it's a graph with vertices and with so-called propagators and in homological algebra, people put here homotopies. And people put here complexes. And they call this higher operation. No, I need to change. And uh, they go to the most like L infinity algebra, A infinity algebra, other infinity algebras. But if we look from the point of view of mathematical physics, we see that it is just a tree structure. We should act, we should add here loops. Say the same input but with a loop. And the same thing with two loops, etc. So to tell the truth, nobody in uh, mathematics were thinking about this. Why it's important? It's important because these notions are like L infinity structure, A infinity structure are coming more or less from the condition that vector field, homological, vector field is homological on some formal space.
actually super disk. And quantization means replacement of this by this. So it is called Battalion Wilkowski Master Equation. And of course, everything here is perturbative in the formal series and age. Let me just explain why this is crucial. It's because in this way, you are replacing the notion of, say, associative algebra by something that is not associative, but like this. OK? So it is definitely a deformation. And if you write down these deformations, you will see loops. You have to see loops. And uh, it is something that people in homological algebra were never thinking about. And this would be, of course, quantization of uh, algebraic geometry. At least perturbative. You see, previously people was do, were doing quantization of field series, and now we are trying to quantize geometry. So it could lead to interesting structures. And we know how homological descent that we will discuss later on would work. So this is already an interesting application. Now let me come to second application. Two D conformal field series. Okay. And it turns out that we want to understand structure of two D conformal field series. It's interesting that if we take conformal field theory and tensor it with so-called BC system, we will get what? Higher topological conformal field theory. It's because it has an energy momentum of this tensor. That is uh, C times T CFT plus one half C TBC system. So this is actually Q applied to B. So Q applied to B. So how, how I draw it? I draw it like this. It is interesting. <coughs> because up to, of course, central charge should be 26. So there is a question, could we abit this thing somehow? Or add some idle system that would just cancel this central charge. But it is very interesting to study the following question. First question, A, deformation theory of 
conformal field theory, and B, the formation theory of HT CFT. So why I think this inclusion is important? This inclusion is important because previously thought that, <coughs> so now I say the old view, and now I'll show the new view. Old view. So inclusion is like this. We we it's it's very nice to study the conformal field series. Why should we study this HTCFT while there are just subsector of conformal field series? It's for mathematicians and we physicists study this. And of course, the main issue here is theory of deformation. It is completely undeveloped. So it is at its baby stage. Baby stage here. Now, the new view. Is that CFT. Uh, sorry, what is this subsector HTCFT in, C in CFT? Oh, so HTCFT is, so from the one point of view, HTCFT is a particular cl class of conformal field theory. With, uh, with skew exact uh, stress energy. Yes, uh, so, so to be HTCFT, you have to have Q as a conserved current. Ah, if, if so you mean that it's zero. a... A subclass in the class of CFTs, not yeah. not a sector, not a sector in the given CFT. Yeah. No, 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 no. no. Okay, no. Okay, okay. It's a class, of course. So CFT mm -hmm. is the name. Yes. So 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 this was considered as a strange subclass of this. You see, like people think of supersymmetric quantum field theories as, as a piece of all quantum field theories. Our matter is not supersymmetric, so why should we study supersymmetric? while we, we we should study physics okay so new v new view says that conformal field series are particular class class of htcft you see <clears throat> every time where you uh, reverse an error uh, it is a surprise just reverse an error. By the way, uh, does anyone recording this? It is being recorded. Okay. <laughs> no, no joke. Okay. Yes. Correct. Okay. Okay. Correct jokes. And uh, yes. and this phenomena, can you see, and this phenomena of reversing of order, I will illustrate. So does it mean that there is equivalence? Or... No, no. It's a good question. You just need to look properly on what is going on. The actual, uh, the actual inclusion is like this, because for each conformal field theory, I can have this HT safety. And uh, I would say that it works. I will illustrate. You see, I want to clean the board. By the way, before you, so by theory of deformations, what exactly you mean the deformations of uh, conformal field? So like conformal perturbation? Oh, like, uh, say you have uh, conformal, uh, say you have sigma module. You know something about very particular sigma module. You would like to study another sigma module that is still conformal. That is close to it. Say by changing metric or changing the Kalbramon field. 
all, all by doing something else. Or suppose you have a product of five minimal modules. So it's a famous example. With a central charge three over five, super conformable. You multiply them. You know everything about them. You would like to understand something about uh, Calabiao manifolds that appear on geometrical limit. Then you need to deform them. So what is, what is interesting? When people develop minimal models, they develop models that are not deformed. However, if you tensor to models, you could start deforming them. So, so, you, so you mean conformal perturbation theory? Uh, yes, conformal perturbation okay. theory, yes. Because, because what actually matters is not the description of the theory itself. What actually matters in some issue is the modular space of the formation. Okay, so like just imagine algebraic geometry. When you write a system of algebraic equations, what do you actually want to do? Do you want to solve? Of course not. And you know that you cannot solve. So you are asking different questions. What is the topology of what happens? What is the deformation space? What is the moduli space, right? Okay. And uh, this is in particular important in the string compactification because in the string compactification, you have effective field theory and you are interested in the moduli space of the formation. So this issue has both theoretical and practical questions. Uh, theoretical from the point of view of conformal field theories, it's good to get some understanding of what conformal field theories are and uh, also in string compactifications. This issue, this issue that I will put here this sign. This sign, this reverse order has an analog in D equals to one. So before discussing of this interesting property, it's better to discuss its one dimensional analog. Now, Another application. Unification of different string theory. So there are type A theories, not type 2A, but type A, topological, so-called topological. Type B theories, and this equivalence is called mirror, but there is also superstring. I would say conventional. So conventional was called Niva Schwartz. And there was also Berkowitz. And uh, it is interesting to compare them and to put this in a, in a so-called universal string. And this universal string just uh, belongs to this HTCFT in dimension two. So if you would like to study universal string, you have to study this. Okay. So this is a, so here I explain two dimensional application.
But of course, it has interesting implications in higher dimensions. In D equals three, people say about 3D mirror. What is it? Also, what is the proper treatment Good old churn silence. Because if you consider only Q closed observables, it is rich, but not very rich. However, if you go to the treatment of HT QFT, you would see a lot of structures that are missed, like Pasha, I, and Donald studied similar question in uh, two-dimensional young mills. That is, of course, two-dimensional version of Chern Simons, and we found that it leads to quite sensible conformal field theory. So when we speak about 3D mirror, we need to think what What we are talking about, what is the category of theories in which we are comparing theories? Now, application number four. So application number four is the following. There is so-called instanton. Instantonic counting. In 4D, n equals 2 twisted, and n equals 4 twisted, super young mills. All this comes together with extra something. So you can you can adhere matter. You can have different uh, matter representation. You can add five dimensions. So you can do a lot of things. Okay. So this instantonic counting is a four D analog of what? Of instantonic counting in D equals two A model. That has a known as Kansevich. Uh, so it's theory developed by Kansevich Malin, but it's called Gromov Witten invariance. So uh, if you actually read what is behind this model, and not only read what is behind the, this model, but also read the paper of Frankel and Nikrasov, where we develop so-called instantonic theories. We develop them in dimension one, two, and four. Sorry, we were stupid to develop it in dimension three. You can, of course, get how to how to define this hey, T, Q, F, T in these dimensions. Okay? So, <clears throat> while we know how to define it, it would be, in, it would be interesting to study to lift the instantonic counting to explicit properties here. And uh, this is in the gauge theory. And there is another issue that was 
where we do not agree among us. And this is an issue to replace holomorphic curves by holomorphic surfaces. And uh, study the number of holomorphic surfaces, presumably passing through cycles or something else. Okay, this is too ambitious, but uh, it could have the following solvable subsector. Not holomorphic curves. So simplest holomorphic curve is a toric holomorphic curve. Toric curves, no high gender. And uh, it would be enough to study maps of toric curves into toric manifolds. So consider this counting and uh, find the uh, 4D analog. of WDVV, find for the analog of WDVV and call it your name. So what can we say about this four-dimensional analog of WDVV? In dimension two, there is a given time theory. That is an analog of Nikrasov theory. And it has only one absolute. In D equal to, in Nikrasov theory, there are two epsilons. Epsilon in the given time theory became a, a spectral parameter in everything related to the theory of holomorphic maps. Equals four, just so, as... Sorry, four. Yeah. So at D equals four, we may expect these two things. Something with two spectral parameters. You see, maybe it could be more complicated, but there should be something. You see, given time function, if you map sphere to CPM, is very explicit. Moreover, You can do similar things uh, by studying instantons on uh, toric variables. There is ADHM construction. So everything is explicit. And uh, also holomorphic maps from here to here, it's, uh, it's also explicit thing. So, th so this was not done yet. Now, another four dimensional application. So it will be last application and uh, There is a notion of 2D mirror symmetry. In the 2D mirror symmetry, we have a side where we have enumerate invariants. Curves going through cycles. And we have a B side where we have something like generalized manifold, 
No, not jeda. Generalized. So if you have a generalized manifold, it has the moduli space of complex structures. Of this, of generalized complex structures, of this generalized manifold. In particular, if you compute uh, enumerative environment for toric varieties on the B side, you have C star to the power K plus superpotential. I thought I thought that there is sort of a continuous spectrum of models uh, that are uh, based on generalized complex geometry, where A and B are uh, like extreme cases of uh, either symplectic manifold or actual Calabian manifold. Uh, maybe, maybe. However, it's clear that you can tensor them, and when you tensor, you deform. Okay, so I am not saying that this is the most general thing. Okay. I'm just giving you an example. Okay. Of course. You went out of focus, by the way. Okay. Ah. So am I, am I in the focus? No. No, the ah. board is out of focus. I, I, I know this trick. I know this trick. It's because I clean the board. You see, my mm -hmm. camera is too smart. Mm -hmm. So, nice. Good. I need to download the driver and tell her not to think that she knows what is important. Okay, so even I don't know. Okay, so here we have super potential, and there is, and there is the following data. There are periods and special coordinates. So if you compute period, periods in terms of special coordinates, you will get this enumerative invariance. So this is a theory of QRG side. So in any case, it's clear that here we have not only one complex manifold, but the theory with deformations and the theory of special coordinates on the base. Okay. Of course, we assume that there is something, so it's conjecture <coughs> for the mirror symmetry. So it is more complicated phenomena. However, it could be explained in the following way. So, so the, it is again invisible, yeah, out of focus. Mm. Interesting. Mm. Still out of focus? Yes. Yes. So I don't know when it is in the focus or when it's out of focus. So if it's out of focus, please tell me. It's out of focus. You see, I told me that uh, if something can happen, it happens. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll be out of power. Am I still out of focus? Yes. Okay, I have an idea, another idea. Did it found the focus? Mm, it changed a little bit, but no. Ah, do you know what? I think it means that we need to have a five minutes break. <laughs> okay, that sounds okay, so, good. So, so, so this computer is too wise, you see? Uh -huh. So it's like my cat. My cat uh, bites me when uh, he wants to eat. <laughs> it's not because he is aggressive. He just wants to eat. So I need to find the focus. So we need 
to have a five minutes break. Okay, five minutes. Mm -hmm. And then I'll tell you about four dimensional mirror.
Ok. <clears throat> so now more than okay, you see, my board is already in focus, right? Mm -hmm. And I now I know a trick how to make it in focus is to reload video. So when we'll go out of focus, I'll reload it. So now I'm coming to the issue of four dimensional mirror symmetry. So on the A side, we have, of course, Donaldson theory, Donaldson Witten theory. So what do we expect to have on the B side? I think it's better to call it B-side. So-called algebraic integrable models. It's so-called zyberg witten type theory. So basically, it's elliptic vibrations that have degenerations. <clears throat> so if we want to study correlators of zero observables, it's enough to know and of course, these algebraic integral models also have, have moduli. <laughs> so let me give you an example. So simple, simplest example of algebraic integral models is K3 surface. You may consider this K3 surface as modular space, space for torus, as universal modular space for torus. However, this K3 surface itself also has moduli. And uh, I, 20, maybe 18, or 22, 20, like 22 modules, maybe less. I forgot. Uh, 
uh, I forgot. I always forget this number. So 16 plus maybe 19, maybe 18. Okay, it, but it has modulus. Okay. So if you want to compute the, the correlator of zero observables, it's enough to work at some particular place. However, if you would like to compute correlators of the deformed theory, you have to develop the theory of special coordinates on the moduli space of algebraic integrable model. Okay? So here you should have 4D version of special coordinates. So we developed a bit of the theory with uh, Nikrasov and Shatashvili and also Greg Moore knows something about these correlators because he just mastered some computations. However, there is no general theory at all. So we have this type of algebraic of four dimensional mirror. We have another type of four dimensional mirror. So this is a mirror for the theory of holomorphic maps into well, x4 basically to p Lee. Basically something like this. We're taking this as a source, we take P Lee as a target and we map. You see gauge, gauge theory comes when you take a pullback of uh, these coordinates here. In particular gauge field is uh, a one form that we have here. So this this, of course, is an interesting target. So it's a point divided by the group. But uh, it's not uh, the most natural target. So the better target would be, once again, if you map x4 into some manifold y. So I have no idea how to work it out in this generality. However, let me tell you what I know. If we map X2 and not in the general Y, but in the toric Y, then on X2, we have pre-images. I use a color. No, I fail to use a color. I'll still try. So here is a map. So what are what are these points? These points are pre images of the intersection points. So here I have intersection points and here I have pre images. Then how can I describe the space of all maps? Basically, I can describe it as a guess of these pre images. So this, that's how mirror was described in my paper with Franklin.
Now. So intersections with what? With a compactific compactification divisor. Mm -hmm. So Y is basically C star to the power N together with the compactification divisor. Example, CPU is C star with a point that I call zero and the point that I call infinity. Okay. So when I have a map, the image of CP1 sometimes goes to P0, sometimes goes to P infinity, and I can look at pre-images. So these are these pre-images. Uh, in simple terms, uh, it's called the zeros and poles. So in order to change uh, the map, you are changing position of zeros and poles. Okay? So you have this, this guess, and then when you integrate the position of these poles, you can get the deformation of the Lagrangian and they form a superpotential, mirror of superpotential. Now, what should we, what should we expect in higher dimension? So I put X4 once again to toric. I am not very ambitious at the moment. I want to find the phenomena before I'd like to generalize. So how people on the algebraic geometry do. So this is a divisor. And now we have a surface. And of course, intersection of the divisor with the surface is a curve. So, let me call this curve Z. Z is intersection image of X4 and divide. So on X4, what do I have? As I have the pullback of this thing. I'll have a curve that is f minus one of z. And then in order to describe these maps, I should uh, integrate over the position of these curves. So conjecture. that mirror for explicitly this theory is type A string theory because I have to integrate over these pre-images. Okay, so it's a doable string theory in X4, and we know something about it. So you see, there is a lot of room in uh, four-dimensional uh, mirror symmetry. And uh, to make theory more tractable, 
Can I, uh, it was a construction in uh, um, so the four dimensional theory was what the Donaldson wouldn't type theory. No, no, here, here. So, the first four dimensional theory, so this was Donaldson. Yes, and this is a theory that people do not believe in, it's just. Pt x4 into manifold y. Or theory of holomorphic maps of surfaces. So people believe in this, it's called Donaldson Vita. People do not believe in this. I think people should believe in this and study. Mm -hmm. There is an argument why people do not believe in this theory. So you say it's a four-dimensional A model, like? Yes. Okay. It's it's another four-dimensional A model. This is also a model, but yeah. it is but it is but here you map to. Well, it's map. like GLSM and NLSM. Right? Okay. Yes. Right. So it's, so okay. in one case you have something, in other case you have no matter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and what was the when you were saying mirror? What to um? What was the statement? Yeah, the about question mirror? is how, how you how you how you try to understand this the theory of these maps. So I went back to two dimensional understanding. So since two is less than four, first it's better to understand something in two and then go to four. So in two dimensions, one of the way to construct mirror, it was like this. The map, holomorphic map, from two-dimensional surface to toric manifold is completely determined up to finite number, uh, up to one dimension, or up to several dimensions, uh, by the pre-images of a place when it intersects with zeros and poles. So to integrate over maps, you integrate over positions of zeros and poles. In formulas, okay? Here, here the map is Y And here is a constant. So this describes you a map from CP1 to CP1. Okay. So what are these A's? A's are pre-images of zero. So what are these B's? Pre-images of infinity. What are zeros and infinities? Mm -hmm. Pre-images of compactification devices. So, in a more general case, suppose you don't want to study just CP1, study CPN. You have I1, etc., IN. CN is Z minus, so here is one. And here is N. B1 and okay. So this is the map to CPM. This map is described by the set of constants. So actually, the set of constants uh, is just exactly that that has that happens when you have a constant map. That's easy. What's more interesting is that the moduli of this map are positions of these pre-images. So what is A? It is pre-image pre uh, of the divisor 
y1 equals to 0. What is b? It's pre image of the divisor y1 equal to infinity. So what you have here are just these pre images of compactification devices. Then you ask, what types uh, of compactification do you allow? It means, do you do you allow to have poles or not allow to have poles? So you pick up some of them. So you have this. Uh, sorry. Sorry. So you have this x2. And you have these different points. Pre image of, say, D1 pre image. Pre image of D1. Pre image of D2. Pre image of D2. Okay, etc. So you have a guess of points, and you integrate this guess of points over x2. So what you have? These are just perturbations of the theory. You may say that in Lagrangian the description you are changing Lagrangian. So you can manifest, manifestly put it into Lagrangian. And you have some zero mode integration. Now let us come to the four-dimensional case. In four-dimensional case, you can write similar equation. But here you will have not only one z, you will have several z, like two z. Okay? Equations are very similar. So geometrically, what does it mean? You will still have curves. So intersection of the image. So, so uh, black thing is a four-dimensional manifold. It goes to this thing. That is f of x4. Of course, it's four-dimensional. Here, the black thing is a divisor, like y equals to 0. Four-dimensional thing intersects with things that has co-dimensional 2, of course, by curve. And orange is this curve. And I take the pre-image. Maybe it's better to write it here in orange. So orange goes to orange. So now I need to arrange colors properly. Blue goes to blue. Intersection between Okay, maybe it's better to write it like this. Intersection between the divisor and the image is a curve. And here is the free image of a curve. Okay. Maybe now it's better. So blue goes here. There is a curve, here is a pre image of a curve. So, in order to find all these holomorphic maps, you just need to consider curves. However, these curves are of different types. They are marked by, uh, by the divisors. So, still, you have uh, x4, and uh, here we have. Uh, Holomorphic curves, you integrate over the position of these curves. So it's uh, doable. It's, a, it's called the uh, A model. 
So you have a theory of constant maps. That's easy. That is deformed, deformed by strings. So Andre, okay. uh, when you write PTX4 into Y, is it uh, the PT10X4 or something like that? No, it no? is just PTX4. So well, when you say one zero, it comes from the gauge fixing, mm -hmm. as we know. So when you write it this way, you don't see the complex structure. When you try to see the complex structure, you see the complex structure only when you make a gauge fixing. Uh -huh. And uh, you see, it's, uh, it, it, it's a tricky, it's, it's a bit tricky. Mm -hmm. But is it, is it a KSZ, this thing? Of course. So uh, the main uh, issue of a KSZ is to say that you can get everything that you have having this type of maps and making a particular gauge fixing. So you start with some very simple uh, action, but then you do a tricky gauge fixing. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Like when you go to the Lie algebra with advanced parity, uh, the, the, there is no uh, conformal structure. I mean, for four dimensions, they never studied, but uh, there is no conformal structure. So how, so what is the difference here? That it's not only Y, that, that here we have Y equipped with the Q vector field. Mm -hmm. so, so proper formula would be, of course, YQ. So for A model, Q is the RAM, for B model, if Dalboa, for gauge theory. So you're talking about Q, Q source or Q target? Q target. Q target. Q target. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, Q Chevalier. That's it. It's interesting that here in the A model, this Q has no, uh, you see, you don't mention neither complex structure of the wall sheet nor the complex structure of the target. However, during gauge fixing, you have to pick them up. Mm -hmm. So now let me advocate why I think that such model do exist. So here I gave a kind of explicit description. Here it's another explicit description. Everybody could understand uh, the map between two toric manifolds. Sorry. So, so you define the model using just uh, using AKZ. The, mm -hmm. the AKZ. Uh, I can define I can define the model using AKZ. I can uh, also define the model using. Uh, Explicit construction. And the, and the target is a threefold or arbitrary dimension? No, any, any. Any. Like, uh, like when we, you see, like when I say A model, I, I mean uh, Gromov Witten field. In Gromov Witten theory, uh, we study holomorphic curves not in Calabiao manifolds. We study them in any more manifolds equipped with complex structure. And, uh, sure. and the A twist of superconformal field theory is a particular case of Gromov Witten theory. Oh, but, it, okay. Um, is, is it clear that it can be constructed from any so, kind of twisting or it doesn't matter? You, you, you can you, uh, so canonically, canonically you construct the twisted model. The forty model. So for 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 a model. Yeah. I'm, uh, the, the four dimensional. You, uh, so in four in two dimension, in four dimension, <coughs> you can also do this. 
and, mm -hmm. and, and there was a peculiarity. Why people never believed in this theory? But, uh, by the way, and should there be PT on the right side also, if you write uh, down on the right side? You mean here? Yes. If Q is the RAM, then should be PT also. Yes, of course. Okay. And uh, yes. And maybe it's even PT star to PT. Oh, mm -hmm. I see. Okay, so, uh, so this is AKZ. So holomorphicity comes from the gauge fixing. So let me explain you me explain you why people never studied this. It's because they thought that the space of holomorphic maps from X4 to Y has virtual dimension equal to minus infinity. So uh, according to the general rules, you never study things that, that happen very rarely, okay? It means that you are studying a ghost, something that never happens. If you have virtual dimension minus infinity. That's why people never study them. Because uh, they consider these holomorphic maps lying inside smooth maps between almost complex manifolds X4 and Y. And here it's true that if you write down equations, I'll write them schematically. Uh, so what's so special about dimension four here? You could say some, the same about dimension two. I will say. Mm -hmm. You have too many equations. You have two equations for one field. In dimension two, you have one equation for one field. And here we have two equations for one field. Mm. So if you naively count, you see that you have, uh, that the number of equations uh, is twice bigger than the number of uh, fields. And since the number of fields is infinite, you have uh, virtual dimension minus infinity. So it was uh, a reason why people, uh, did not study these objects. Is it interesting to take why a point? Uh, let me tell you what is interesting to study. We will come, we will come to this in a second, and you know it. However, there is a peculiarity. If X4 is not almost complex. But complex and Y is not just almost complex, but complex. So it's a restriction. Then it turns out that these equations are not uh, independent. So there is, I call it CZGs. Okay. CZG, yeah. CZG. Ah, yes. In English, you, for such words, you, you don't have this. Why? So in order to explain the CZG, let me consider the, the similar problem. Similar problem is, suppose instead of complex manifold with coordinates Z1 and Z2, you have a real manifold like you have R4, R2. Then you can write down similar 
equation. Okay, why not? Once again, you have overdetermined system of equation. So this system of equation could be parameterized by saying that you study dxi equal to zero. Okay. So this looks like being overdetermined by the same reason. However, you know that if you parameterize these equations by <coughs> Lagrangian parameter, you will get this. So, so this should be valid everywhere. That's why my Lagrangian parameter has, has not only letter i, but also point t1, t2. So it's a, actually a field. And if you want to integrate over two-dimensional space, say r2, this should be, of course, one form. Then c is a d that I can never same is a symmetry. Like this. It means that you can change equations, that you can change equations, uh, nothing happens. It is the same system of equation. So the trick here is that in this case, we should consider we can consider this equation. However, we may consider it as a gauge theory. So, <clears throat> you see the honest map, constant map in the space of maps R2 to manifold determined by this equation still has finite dimension. Okay? So oh, if you replace this by d over dz1 bar, d over dz2 bar, you can replace this equation by d bar xi, and here you have lambda i. So what should be this lambda i? Two one form. And then once again, it also has a gauge symmetry. Well. D bar epsilon i, where epsilon i is, of course, two zero form. Okay. Okay, what saves the date? The day is saved because D bar square equals to zero. Okay, it's very important thing. So you can you have the CZD only if a source is not almost complex, but complex. And you can play it in different dimensions. Okay, so that's that's the issue of so-called holomorphic field theories that are popular nowadays. But does it mean that we need to construct uh, uh, to have higher ghosts and casualty generators corresponding to the CCGs? Like we do, so you see, so when you look at. So I guess when we cast it into 
BV or something. Of, co of course, of course. So when I write lambda dx, I'm sure you know this theory. Plus gauge fixing. Of course, you know this theory as under the name ADX. Mm -hmm. That is abelian to do two D young mills at zero coupling. Mm -hmm. So holomorphic maps is kind of complexization of this theory. And of course, Pasha, we know how to deal with this theory. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, so this is so-called field theoretical reason why this exists. And this mistake was actually just neglected or missing of this case was done by Gromov. Because Gromov said, come on, the space of holomorphic maps from a surface to a complex manifold considered as a map of almost complex manifolds has a dimension that is minus infinity. And he was right, you see? So as a mathematician, he was right. But people uh, got uh, the moral uh, that uh, they should not just, uh, they should not study them. And despite everybody knew uh, explicit formulas, nobody studied it because they say, ah, oh, it has, uh, it's a strange phenomenon. These holomorphic maps uh, are something strange. There are no, it will not be able to write down a field theory for them because of uh, minus dimension, virtual dimension. And it was Gromov who was teaching people not to study phenomena that live in virtual dimension minus infinity. And he was right again. So is it a, uh, is, yes. it, is, is it a holomorphic twist of 4 n equals one sigma model? So uh, uh, it, is a, it is a holomorphic twist uh, of free field, as far as I remember. There is only one holomorphic theory in dimension one. Uh, sorry, that starts with a scalar. And uh, the idea of existing of such theories was put forward in 86 by Gerasimov. And I was uh, listening to him, being not able to understand how to apply this. So then, in the year 94, I and Yagansen, Andrei Yagansen. Yeah, so yeah, so there was uh, a lot referring. But so, uh, so we studied what is now called the holomorphic twist of super young mills of n equals one. And we found equations something like this. The d bar of something was q of something. And we said, oh, in d equals four. And we said, oh, this is homomorphicity in cohomology. And we were happy and uh, we made uh, a twist. And uh, while we were writing uh, this paper, I went to Trieste and uh, I met Witten and uh, he did the twist. Some math to some twist of n equals uh, two super n mills, killing half of the degrees of freedom. So then it looked exactly like holomorphic twist because some degrees of freedom became messy. And then I asked him, 
look, if we twist it right <coughs> from the very beginning, we will get <coughs> this. And then Witton started to shout at, at me that uh, I would never twist uh, with the normal symmetry. For me, it was hard to understand uh, because it was a background. But I was very frightened. So at that year, 93, okay, I was, uh, I was young, but uh, not young, I was already 30, but still I was afraid of Witten. And when Witten started to, 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 to shout at me that uh, it's impossible to do it, you should not do it, I become frightened and I told Jagansson, oh, Witten is strongly against this. We should not publish. I, I guess it said, why? The work is proper. We should publish. Then I said, oh, I am afraid I'll take my name out of it. Jagansson said, good. So he published the paper in 93 or 94, I think. It's a good paper where you have this holomorphicity up to Q. Then later on, when, in, when at Yale, I with uh, Nikrasov, Moore, and Shatashvili were studying, trying to study holomorphic theories in dimension four. We, of course, started with the holomorphic BC system. And of course, we see that here, say you have any, anything. It could be one form, it could be something. Uh, the, 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 there is a gauge symmetry, and of course you, you, you should fix it. And then you, you, you come to this. And in this way we realized ideas of Gerasimov. So Gerasimov has a lot of great ideas, and uh, even he finishes them, but uh, he rarely publishes them. So it's a peculiar peculiarity of Gerasimov. So I know that he has a file of solved problems of different type, physics, mathematics. So he solves problems, he put it into this file and he is satisfied. So sometimes he publishes something from this file. So, so this was predicted by Gerasimov. I understood it this way. And this is of course called, now it's called holomorphic theories. So one of the application of holomorphic theories is to study four dimensional maps. And of course, since there is a four dimensional maps, you can study them in a given tiny class of style. You can study them equivalently. So suppose we have not any X4, but say C squared to toric. Why? And you have U1 square acting here, and here we have UN acting here. So we, you can study them equivalently with respect to all this. And uh, you would probably develop Nikrasov theory for holomorphic maps. Once again, having here epsilon one, epsilon two, and go to higher dimensions and have given time like function of epsilon one, epsilon two, with Nikrasov properties. And from this, you should, you should probably develop the higher dimensional analog of WDVV. So this is kind of line of research. <coughs> Let me tell you another thing.
So what was so? Yes. Now I'm curious. So what was the anomalous symmetry that made him angry? So the R symmetry. R symmetry. Of course. And what's the resolution? How how you cancel anomaly somehow? I think you can use it. So it's you see. You may use it, or you just you can just start with this theory. Okay, it's a, it's a normal so what? So when you do a twist in dimension two, uh, you also have you want symmetry that is anomalous if you twist BC system. So what? If you have BC B bar C bar system, you may think that you have a problem. But if you twist just BC system, it's okay. In particular. Uh, when you study heterotic string, you have beta gamma system that may be considered as twisted something uh, without beta bar gamma bar. So what? So Andre, you're out of focus. Or the blackboard is out of focus. Ah, it's because I cleaned everything. Mm -hmm. Yes, no, it's just completely out of focus here. Yeah. No. Ah, crazy, crazy device. I will teach you how to make a focus of decent people. Yes. I will teach you. I'll try this. Oh, that's very good, yeah. Okay, good. You see, you, you have to punish your robots from time <laughs> to time. <laughs> and then they behave better. So, uh, let me tell you how not to be afraid of uh, four dimensions, okay? The way not to be afraid of four dimensions is uh, to tropicalize. So, uh, I'm sorry, Andrei, have an organizational question. So, is there, yes. a, ah. is there a setup a bound? So, uh, uh, let us do the following. Let me spend seven more minutes and we will quit. Uh, so I, I don't want to kind of do anything that's- Oh no, I, 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 have, I, I, I have the last message. I have very last message to say. Sounds good. <laughs> Afraid of 4D tropical life. So in the so in oh, the uh, it happened again and it happened again the the uh -huh. the focus mm. no it didn't okay. compress it no uh, oh, uh, oh good good what, what did you do you see we have okay, complicated just... relations you see I have complicated relations with this camera okay I need to go to computer uh, psychoanalytic and. <laughs> so this is this. And this is this. Mm -hmm. CP2 is like triangle. Okay? Then holomorphic maps here, here. But th does it mean that we go into some kind of special singularity in the geom? Yes. Mm -hmm. But since we are counting, you see, it doesn't matter where we count. So if we study curves here, we actually study, you see, The source should be written in blue. Map is black. Something like this. But this these pictures correspond to a particular geom, so it is complex structures, or of course, and, and of course we need to integrate. So we need to integrate over the position, over length. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, for D, C, okay, CP1 times CP1. When we tropicalize, it is this. So it will be a, it will be a source. So what are we studying? No, it's not. It would, it would be a target. What I'm saying, it would be a target, and we we want to map it into say CP two CP three. Um, sorry, so there's what is it? there's some modular space of instantons, and you can replace it with integrate with some simpler integral, or. Yes, you see, if you call them instantons, mm -hmm. uh, it's better to call them, you see, there are instantons in dimension one. Mm -hmm. So actually, in dimension, sorry, in dimension, in one complex dimension, there are instantons. Here, analog are strings. But in particular, those are objects of the same dimension on the left and on the right. So the modular space of instant is, so, is the so, same so, as the so, so dimension, so complex dimension goes to real dimension. Mm -hmm. In tropicalization. Because you have phase and you somehow uh -huh. take special care about this phase, putting it in, 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 in a type of a particle. So in the course, I will tell more about it. Mm -hmm. I'll provide some detail, but here I'm just giving a feeling why you should wait until I, I come to this paper, to this point. Mm -hmm. that, that actually have two dimensional theory of maps somewhere here. So it's two dimensional theory. It's, it's not that hard to believe that such, such a theory exists. And then there are pre images of divisors. So pre images of divisors are something like this. So it's pre-image of one divisor. And this is pre-image of another divisor. So what do we see here? We see here two-dimensional theory that is that has modernization with the help of particles. Okay, so we know. So, the, so I was confused. So, so, so the square is is now is now the source. It's not anymore oh, the target. Oh, yes, source. Okay. Mm -hmm. So on the source, you have pre images of devices. You see, these pre images of devices are Feynman diagrams of particles. What happens when you replace uh, when you modify your theory? by Feynman diagrams. It means that you're integrating some fields out. So if you would like to sum this, you have to sum it into some field. So you will have a two dimensional theory with some field. When you integrate it out, you get these uh, Feynman diagrams and it's exactly the space of holomorphic maps of uh, something two dimensional into toric something. So nothing to be afraid of. But can, can, can you kind of have all diagrams? Can you have loops or well, there are this something with, with angles? Of, of course. The, so, 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 the, so this diagram, so I am writing this diagrams. Mm -hmm. So uh, gauge fixing here is actually, so Q, so that, these are of course super particles that, uh, with Q equals D and uh, G equals IV, where V is just integer vector. And one and K. 
Mm-hmm. Because Hamiltonian is LV. So the Hamiltonian moves a particle. So there are no loops. So these are trajectories. Um, uh, so you are describing uh, an edge of, of this graph. Yes. Mm-hmm. So it is an edge. So particles have uh, are labeled by vectors in terms of the space of degrees of the particle. And mm-hmm. uh, here interaction is of course the sum of these Vs. So it's very similar to the diagrams that were studied by Fukaya. Mm-hmm. However, in Fukaya theory, uh, the particles were open strings moving correspondingly. And in this case, these particles are just closed strings wrapped around the torus that we are not seeing. And this vector is just the type of wrapping. And they interact such uh, that the just closed strings, such that the number of wrapping uh, is conserved. So you can make a field theory out of it, and uh, and that's it, that's it. And this would be a mirror theory to the theory of holomorphic maps. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when you have a theory, you can try to study given tiny class of processes, epsilons, everything, whatever you wish. So this is a four-dimensional application that actually is a two-dimensional. From the point of numerative geometry, it's two-dimensional. If you want to study peculiarities of uh, four-dimensional holomorphic theory, you need to go uh, outside the Q closed sector, and then you'll see some additional stuff. Okay, that's it. So this is uh, how not to be afraid of. Uh, well, I, I didn't uh, understand. Uh, what did you tropicalize the source or the target? Both. Uh, both. Both. And it was it is Michalkin, who was studying tropicalization for some period of time, and uh, and he studied these diagrams, uh, moduli spaces, everything. And the result is not surprising. Basically, the moduli space are length and graphs. So moduli space is also tropicalized. Okay. So it looks like a modul- moduli space here is some sort of a polyhedron. Okay. So I am not I am not paid by by whom? I am not paid by Mercedes Benz. However. So these are, what are these things? These are tropical curves with four marked points. Mm -hmm. Points. One, two, three, four. You can write such curve. You can also write such curve, and you can write a third curve. So these are curves, T1, T2, T3. So these are moduli. So these lines go to infinity. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the moduli space? Tropical version of M04. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So coordinate here is T1, T2, T3. They meet at a common point. 
<laughs> and this is also a tropical curve. Yes. So maybe I have to say that here, here I have this thing. So moduli space. Mm. Yes. So there, there is no kind of angle sitting on the edge, just the length. Uh, uh. So topologically, if you would like to embed this M04 somewhere, you would see an angle. But you do not need to embed it. Mm -hmm. Geometrically, see in tropical case, you have geometry. So geometrically, it's like this. Mm -hmm. So you see, all this thing is based out of intervals and rays. So curves are based, and uh, when you see when you think about the classes like uh, like whose classes like Marita Marfat classes, you can easily compute them because uh, things break at vertices. They are supported at vertices, of course. Mm -hmm. So this this picture is. How not to be afraid of dimension two? Okay, but here I, I was teaching you how not to be afraid of dimension four. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, if we are not afraid, I consider this as a good news. So let me finish right now, and let us switch the recording. All right, oh. switch it off. Yes. Mm -hmm.